Good evening. It is, um, it is great to be welcoming all of you uh, in this wonderful event on behalf of all of us at the school. Uh, and it is uh, a distinct pleasure to be able to hold this uh, event in our new beautiful campus uh, that just opened up uh, a few months ago. And we've only started having events like that uh, since a month and a half ago. So this is all new to us as well. So we're gathered today to uh, award the 2022 Fort Winnick Prize uh, in Business Ethics presented by the Bernstein Center uh, in Leadership and Ethics. And for more than 30 years, uh, we've been giving out this prize, celebrated uh, our own commitment uh, for as a school to recognize productive, moral, and thoughtful business leaders uh, at work and tonight the prize is being bestowed to a trailblazer uh, who is actually well known to us here at the school uh, in Danuri uh, for her ethical leadership uh, that uh, at her core in everything that she has done, both as CEO and chairman of PepsiCo and what she has been doing since then. Uh, so it is wonderful to have you here and to join uh, all of the other incredible awardees that, we've, uh, that we have had. It is this interface between business and society is a crucial, crucial area uh, that rethinking what business leaders should be addressing in their own strategic imperatives, rethinking how this should be implemented to better uh, communities, to better employees, to better uh, sort of the life of our own nation. Uh, how this interacts with globalization, an interesting discussion we were having just uh, 10 minutes ago, uh, all of these are at the core uh, of what business leaders are being asked to actually think and grapple with uh, uh, a lot more today than uh, sort of uh, in the time past. And, and I think this prize exemplifies our focus uh, in that particular area. Indra uh, joins an amazing community of personaries whose impactful careers. Am I supposed to do something? I, I have a, a note that the slide is going to go up. Is it's my job? No. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> that's typical, you know. I'm not, <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not allowed to do important jobs. Uh, but uh, honorees that have been impactful in their own careers, uh, leading purpose-driven strategies, and they continue to inspire students. They continue to inspire academics and experienced practitioners alike much like the namesake of the prize, uh, Benjamin Bodwinick, who graduated in 1926. Uh, pretty soon we'll be celebrating his centennial uh, uh, in, uh, by giving the award uh, a few years from now. For now, it's my honor uh, to be able to extend a warm welcome to members of the family of the Bodwinick Wolfenson family that, and thank them not only for their unwavering dedication to the school, um, but also to their support of the school, not just with this uh, prize, but also with the annual uh, scholarship, the uh, Benjamin Bondwinning scholarship that a lot of recipients of that scholarship are here. Uh, and you know that benefits uh, the lives of our students, making education much more uh, uh, affordable and launching them into an incredible journey that follows after that. Now, finally, I want to acknowledge my good friends and colleagues at the Bernstein Center uh, for the incredible work that they do, uh, leading uh, in sort of the school in our efforts to think about value-based leadership and ethics uh, and putting it at the heart of what we do here at the school in our education, in our curriculum, in our thought leadership, in the events that we do, uh, triggering a sort of uh, discussion and debate among uh, all of us. So this is uh, crucial. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to my friend uh, and uh, colleague and uh, amazing faculty director, Modupe Akinola, who will be the host and moderator uh, of this evening. Come on. Thank 
Thank you, Dean McGalaris. And good evening, everyone. It's so good to see all of you. I'm Madhu Bakinola. I'm a professor in the management division. I see some of my lead students here. I taught some of you lead. And I'm also the faculty director of the Bernstein Center. And it's so good to see you this evening. As you know, we are honoring one of the most beloved and groundbreaking CEOs, Indra Nui tonight. And uh, some quick housekeeping. Today's event is a PPIL event. So you can make sure to get your credit if you scan the QR code there to make sure that you sign up for PPIL. So we've talked about this prize that we're given called the Botwinick Prize. What is it? It was established by Bessie and Benjamin Botwinick. And sometimes when I see CBS 26, I'm like, oh, that is 1926. Um, he was a well-respected CPA at Benjamin Botwinick & Co. And they were also founders of the Botwinick Wolfenson Foundation. And who does this prize get bestowed upon? I'll quote, an individual or representative of a business organization exemplifying the highest standard of professional and ethical conduct, as well as ethical decision-making and leadership. This year's nominating committee included staff, students, faculty, alums, members of the Botwinick Wolfenson family and the Dean's office. And we unanimously agreed that Indra Nui's commitment and pursuit of ethical leadership and driving change made her so worthy of this prize. She joined PepsiCo in 1994 and we'll talk more about her journey there. But in her rise to the top, she made so many impactful changes. She started this performance with purpose initiative that we'll also talk a little bit about. And it's just one example of her longstanding impact, um, which again, we will get into deep. So you can tell I'm eager to get into the, uh, the discussion of, that we're gonna have together. Her 13 years as CEO, she didn't just focus on doing good, but also doing well. The company's net revenue grew by 80%, more than 80%. And she not only shattered the glass ceiling, but also market caps. You like that? That's cute, right? Uh, she inspired <laughs> generations of women, generations of immigrants, generations of males too, um, as a person who has truly been ethical in her mindset and mindful in her practice. So this is why it's truly an honor to present you, Indra Nui, with the Botwinick Prize this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you all. It's a real honor to be here, and a greater honor than I can say to be awarded the Botwinick Prize in Business Ethics. Now, as Madhubi said, Benjamin Botwinick, the creator of this award, graduated from this great institution in 1926. And as a young student looking ahead to his future, I couldn't blame him if he felt a little intrepid, like the world was shifting beneath his feet. His was an era of profound disruption. Women had just won the vote. Prohibition and protectionism were on the rise. The automobile was quickly uh, uh, displacing the railway and the US was on the brink of the Great Depression. Nearly a century later, our world can feel just as uncertain. We are recovering from a great pandemic, hoping to usher in a new roaring 20s. We're introducing our own technologies, cryptocurrency, mRNA vaccines. We face challenges like climate change and the crisis in care, while also making immeasurable strides in science, diversity, equity, and inclusion. But whether it's the 1920s or the 2020s, in moments like this, when history unfolds, one thing remains the same. Our world needs leaders with character. 
leaders who uphold the highest standards of moral conduct, who are the best of humanity. Benjamin Botnovic was fresh into knowing this. Benjamin Botnovic. His hope was that schools like this might inspire ethical leadership in business as much as in other fields. Not long ago, I admit, the idea of ethical business would have raised eyebrows. Some might even said it's a contradiction in terms. How can companies designed to mercilessly pursue profit be asked to behave ethically? But it is far from a new idea. In the early days of America, our founders envisioned a country where enterprise and shared ownership were inseparable from democracy. George Washington wrote of a society that works in the interests of all persons of industry. Their big idea was corporate charters, a form of social contract. The charters had to be approved by government and the government only approved them if the corporation had a public purpose. This was the trade-off for giving companies certain legal protections and privileges. Investors could reap profits, but public had to benefit. Today, despite much talk and despite grand statements from the business roundtable, there is a danger that the idea of ethical business gets relegated to a small group of acronyms, CSR, ESG, DEI, a fringe concern, not a feature of our economic system. We cannot allow business ethics to exist in the shadow. We cannot allow business ethics to exist in the shadow. Business leaders today, including no doubt the future CEOs in this room, are under more moral pressure than ever. A study last year from the Ethics and Compliance Initiative found that the pressure to compromise ethical standards is the highest it's been since 2000. So I think we can say that we're at a critical turning point where we will tip the scales for better or for worse. I'd like to ensure that it's for the better. I believe we need to return to the founder's vision for our economy. Somewhere along the way, that social contract was forgotten. What's good for commerce and good for society must go together. It's why we're here today honoring Mr. Botvinnik's vision of leaders who create value for their stakeholders, for society. You know, the Ethics and Compliance Initiative has laid out a careful methodology which helps us to measure the intangible in ethics. They set out four helpful criteria. Pressure in the workplace to compromise ethical standards, observations of misconduct, reporting misconduct, and any retaliation perceived by employees after they report misconduct. But ultimately, I think it all comes down to character. Because what are ethics if it's not a reflection of character? It's character lived, acted aloud, and practiced daily. Every day we might be tempted to take a shortcut. We might see a moral compromise. It might seem the easier course of action. But every great leader must have an internal compass that points true north. A true leader asks himself critical questions like, are we doing right by our people? Are we doing right by the communities we partake in and serve? Graduates from this great school have gone on to start and run global companies. BuzzFeed, HSBC, Duracell, Goldman Sachs, Estee Lauder, Mercedes-Benz. Graduates are also journalists, senators, ambassadors, philanthropists, astronauts, and Pulitzer Prize winners. Wherever we go, Whatever we become, each and every one of us has the responsibility to infuse integrity into the institutions we join and the institutions we lead. So to the future leaders in this room, in another 100 years, let's look back proud of the incredible progress we've made. Today, I just want to say thank you to the Botwinik family, Dean Maglaris, Modupe, and the entire Bernstein Center for allowing me to carry on Mr. Botmanik's legacy in this small way. I'm truly honored to receive this award. Thank you very much. <laughs>